let's talk about writing your plan. That's the next thing on the list. Um, if you are serious about reaching a goal, if you're t serious about changing your life, you have to pledge your promise to be active and remain active. And, and again, you're not going to do that with an activity you're not, you're not going to enjoy. So think of one of these activities that maybe fits into that, that model for you. Maybe there's something that you can enjoy. Uh, I think most of us, a lot of us, when we were younger, were involved in competitive sports. Well, that's all good and well. I, I actually had a colleague that played racquetball with me a couple years ago, and he went out and beat me quite often because he was 20 years younger. I will use that for an excuse. You know, um, he was actually a better racquetball player, too. But I used it mostly because I wanted to rehabilitate my knee. I just had a knee replacement, and I wanted to rehabilitate and build up the musculature so I can protect that knee better. And it was very functional for that. It also helped me lose a lot of weight. Well, you know, I love racquetball, but in reality, I can't do that on a regular basis because I knew after I finished playing him, I had a dislocated shoulder and my knee swelled up twice the size. That's probably not the best exercise for me. So sometimes even when you enjoy the exercise, it might not be the right one. Pick the right exercise for where you are with your age, your, your, uh, g your, your gender, your, your, um, uh, your predisposition as far as your heredity. Uh, and, and, and perhaps uh, the kind of exercise that you're most prone to be able to do over a longer period of time. I can't play racquetball for the rest of my life, but I can probably bike for the rest of my life. At least I'm planning on it right now. The bad news is doing this on camera and doing it in front of you all is you can hold me to this. And if I get to be twice my size this time next year, I thought I saw you on that video saying that you were going to maintain. Uh, I'll hold you to the same thing because I'm looking at y'all right now. I remember he's, who's here. I'll, I'll hold you to the same thing in, in a year, okay? So goal setting guidelines, write your plan, pledge your promise to remain active, uh, include your daily lesson plans, have scheduled times, program details, and then going to the next slide. Before you start your activity, you should have some type of assessment with regards to your medical ability. Um, if, you, if you don't feel comfortable with, your, with, with where you are as far as your wellness, you probably need to go see a doctor. We call that a PARQ assessment. Uh, determine if you're physically able. Uh, don't go out and start a routine that you're not acclimated to and you're accustomed to without checking with your physician first. Find out where you are and then determine the amount of activity and the kind of activity that you're going to be involved in. Um, again, determine which ones you're going to enjoy. Uh, purchase proper equipment with regards to swimming. You know, what equipment do you need? Well, some swim trunks with regards to walking and, and, and jogging and, and, and running. Uh, a nice pair of shoes would help. Now, you should still wear shorts and shirt, but the shoes are the most important thing, okay? Uh, you good, good, good pair of running shoes. Those are all good exercise activities for, you know, because it's convenient. Uh, what do I need in order to run, jog, or walk? Well, all you have to have is a street or a sidewalk or even some grass, preferably even, to, to run on. Uh, that's very convenient. Uh, it's, it's also convenient because uh, it, it doesn't cost us as much. Uh, you just need a nice pair of shoes in order to run, run jog, or walk. What do you, well, you need a facility in order to swim, okay, unless it starts raining real hard. and It's supposed to get some rain this weekend, but maybe not that much. Uh, most of us are going to have to go to a pool in order to swim, so that's not as convenient. That's something to take consideration. Um, when you start your exercise, whatever the activity is, after you find out which ones you like, which one's most convenient, which one's going to work for you as far as where you're at uh, uh, in your predisposition, you also need to be thinking about uh, how you should start. Uh, why is it not good necessarily to work real hard at first? Why, why would I not want to go out there and just, okay, I'm going to bike and then I'm going to bike hard for one lap around Lake St. Louis and that's three miles instead of maybe going a little bit slower and reducing my intensity and going two laps. I could injure myself. That happens oftentimes. That's one of the reasons is if we go too hard too soon, you actually hurt yourself. Okay, why else? What's that? You burn out faster. That's really important psychologically is we get out there and we really are miserable. I mean, it might even be an activity you enjoy, but if you do it at such a pace where you're not enjoying it, you're going to make yourself miserable and you're not going to want to go out there the next day. I mean, I, I remember what that was like, and I couldn't catch my breath, and I was really miserable. I think I found a reason why I don't want to do that today. And so you find yourself not going out there as much. And really, honestly, it's better to in, reduce the intensity and go over a longer period of time than it is to go high intensity and go for a shorter period of time. And I was brought up in a mentality of running a six-minute mile. So I remember even after I finished my master's degree, going back, and I was training at a facility, and I said, well, I'm going to go out there and run a six-minute mile. And I got my mile down to six minutes, and I realized, well, so what? 
I'm not playing football anymore. That's not going to do me any good, be around a six-minute mile. What I really wanted to do is keep my body fat down. So I said, well, why not two miles and run 10-minute miles or 11-minute miles or even 12-minute miles? It's better. And it's less, it's, it's, it's easier on my joints. And then I started training for an ultra marathon. And my boss at that time, department chair at Liberty University, was running ultra marathons and he was in charge of ultra marathons. So I started running up to 20 miles a day. And, and uh, I was enjoying it. We got a runner's high, I thought that was fantastic. We'd take off for lunch and run for an hour and come back and take a shower. Um, and, 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 you know, I felt really good the rest of the day. So, Think about those things with regards to uh, starting gradually and working your way up and what you're really trying to accomplish and think, you know, faster and maybe harder is not what you really want to do. Start gradually, make it fun, make it enjoyable. Don't, don't push yourself so hard that you can't enjoy it. Uh, try to vary your program. Uh, try to be eclectic and bring it up, maybe do some cross training. Uh, maybe one day you'll be on the bike and maybe you'll do uh, something else, uh, maybe a treadmill or something else in the next day if you're indoors and you're trying to make it through the winter. Make sure you warm up and cool down properly. Uh, warming up and cooling down might be a really a slower pace at whatever you're doing and then stretch after you warm your body up okay and then go ahead and do the activity that you're going to enjoy. Those are all part of program planning specifics.